Hey guys, I'm Mark. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, for this project, we're not going to plan anything. Normally, I spend a bunch of time in some modeling software and figure all the measurements out right down to the letter so that I can make some really good plans afterwards. I don't feel like doing it this time. There's not going to be any plans available for this one. I am going to show you how I go through the winging it process. So at this point, I have milled up a bunch of rough lumber into usable boards down three quarter inch off the joiner and the planer. And now we're just going to start building and figure it out as we go. Let's jump ahead here for a minute and I'll show you how this thing ends up. This way, you'll have a clear picture of what all my upcoming incessant rambling is in reference to. This whole project is a request from my mother. She wanted to replace a massive battleship of a desk with something a bit more simplified. She wanted built-in power and a way to hide any unsightly charging cables, as well as some shallow drawers that were big enough to store some papers and a laptop. Except for those basic requirements, the rest of the design was the dealer's choice. I kept a bit of live edge because I'm particularly fond of that look, and I even managed to incorporate a live edge waterfall on the top corners of the cubby. The whole thing sits on top of an adjustable base from today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. This is the Pro Plus Standing Desk Frame E7. It is strong, quiet, and has four programmable height presets so you can get to your perfect working position by just tapping one button. Its height adjustment range goes from just under two feet to over four feet tall, and its retractable frame even allows you to adjust to different desktop widths. It's powered by dual motors that are capable of holding up to 355 pounds, and it's so rock steady that even at its highest level, the desk is still wobble free. I'll get into a few more details about the base later, but for now, let's get started with the build. So at this stage in the game, I have a general idea of what this is going to be. It's going to be a shallow box that has some drawers inside it and then a cubby over the top of it. So I know that I need uh, 24 inches of depth on this desk and about 45 inches of width. And so I've got to put together a couple of panels to be the top and bottom of that main box. This was better material and it flattened easier. So this is truly three quarter. This is all kind of ratty stuff, uh, less desirable cherry. Let's put it that way. Um, and it's something less than three quarter, probably approaching five eighths. Uh, so I don't want to mix these two piles together, but this is enough to make the main work surface of this desk. And I left a live edge on because I'm hoping that when I put it together like this, I will be able to have a live edge front on it. Now below this is just going to be the bottom. It might as well be made out of cardboard because you'll never see it. Uh, so it doesn't really matter that this is thinner. It doesn't really matter that it's less desirable. I just have to combine all of this ripping out you know, I have some stuff that's still not flat. I have some cracks and imperfections that I'm just going to cut out of there. And I have to combine these into another 24 inch wide panel. And then we'll have enough to work with. And then I've got enough remaining material back there to do the drawers, to do the vertical components, to do all that stuff with. All right, we're working on the top. Um, this is going to be the front facing edge. We can see there's the live edge. And most of the time you get what you get with live edge. Uh, that being said, I'm going to give it the best chance of being symmetrical left to right on the desk. Now over here, we've got a much wider spot than we have over here. And then we have a little bit of a curve, which is actually going to be a nice spot to sit, I think. But I don't want this to stick way out further than this side. So what I'm going to do is take what is a pretty straight edge and line it up on here and figure out where it actually just makes contact. Now we can see it's making contact that whole, you got six inches or so of flush. So this point and this point are pretty consistent around this arc. And then I know that I want our overall length of the desk to be about 45 inches. So if I get right to the point of contact and the point of contact, we lucked out and have right at 45 inches. So I'm gonna make a mark and I'm gonna make a mark at those points. Now, just to take a look at it, from that mark to the back of this board right now is 11 and 15 sixteenths on this side and 12 and 7 sixteenths on this side. So this is definitely wider than this. And if I just glued it up the way it is, you would have what would be the right side to stick out just a little further, maybe so the point you wouldn't even notice. I'm gonna fix it anyway. So I'm going to come back to a known distance from this point. Let's call it, I've got just enough room for 11 and three quarters. 
So then I'm going to mark, mark that. And then I'm going to come over to this side and mark 11 and 3 quarters. And now I can draw a straight line through those two marks. I can cut this edge off at the bandsaw, basically taking a long skinny wedge out, and then I'll rejoint that edge. And then I'll know from my two furthest out points to my back should be as close to perfect as possible so I get that nice natural arc without any weird shapes one side or the other. This is square, this is square, this should be about square. If I measure from the back to the front edge with my mark, I'm at 28. From the back to the front edge with my mark, I am at 28. So now this to this kind of has this natural arc ending at the same distance from the back. But I have a lot of extra on either side and I have a little extra depth. This should get down to about 25. Uh, I'm going to have this overhang just a little bit. So I need to trim a little off of here and a little off of the ends. I'm not going to go all the way to exactly 45. I want to have a little bit of room so I can square it up after it's glued together. But there's just no reason to glue these parts together now and complicate the glue up any more than you have to. The next thing I need to do here is square off one side of my big panels and then cut them to their final length. And normally I would do that with a straight line guide with my track saw or with my circular saw. It, it's a poor man's track saw. I just wrecked the only good blade I had in my circular saw and I don't trust it to cut this without destroying it. So now I'm having to backpedal. Uh, the nearest new blade is 20 miles away so I'm just going to try something else. This is my giant crosscut sled. 24 inch panels don't fit into a 20 and a 3 quarter inch space very well, but all of the squareness comes from this back fence. The front fence is just to add strength so that your two halves don't get all floppity on you. And if you're careful, you can use it without it. So I'm going to dismantle, come on now, longer screw than I thought I had. So now, as long as I'm careful with it, because you can see that there's some flex there, not a lot, I can use this and it's still going to be perfectly square with the blade and it's going to allow me to use my bigger panels on this smaller surface. So we're ready to give this a shot. I have a roller stand underneath here to help support this outside end to keep it from wanting to tip away from the blade. And we'll just have to pull it way back and really support it because it's going to want to tip off of the saw this way. So just take it slow and easy. So now we've got this side square and I've got my mark drawn at 45 inches and I've drawn it the whole length so that I can see it actually contact the blade first but I also know that this is where it passes through my kerf back here, so I'm pretty confident that we're on the right track. Uh, it's the same edge that I cut this side on is up against the fence. I didn't turn it around or anything like that, so if there was any error, it's the same error. Um, I have the rolling stand behind this thing holding this up right now, so that's the only reason it's not falling to the ground. And I also have a piece of plywood clamped to the edge so that this space underneath here is now accounted for and it's not trying to tip off of my sled. So the last thing I'm going to do is make a mark on this piece of plywood right exactly at the edge where I'm going to cut this. That way when I bring the second piece in here I line it up to that edge and it will be identical to this. It's basically a stop block but I don't have enough space to put an actual stop block in there because it could bind me up when I start to slide.
joinery for the main box is really simple. Just a few shallow rabbits and dados that will capture some vertical boards to add strength and keep things square. I used the pieces themselves to create fences with perfect spacing and referenced off them using a pattern bit in my trim router. On the bottom panel, I was able to cut all the way through from end to end, but on the top panel, I didn't want the board showing through the live edge, so I marked a stop point to quit routing. Then, I used a chisel to square off the end of that channel. At this stage, I really have no idea what finish I'll be using in the end, but I know I won't be able to reach the inside very well, so before gluing this case together, I pre-finished the inside surfaces with Odie's oil. I went this route because I'm not planning to use any hardware for the drawers, and since that means it will be just wood rubbing on wood, I liked the idea of having an oil and wax finish on the inside. The glue up for the base was very simple. I used clamps pulling sideways to ensure the outside pieces were tight against their shoulders, then squished the top and the bottom. I did what I could to clamp the center dividers, but since you can't see them, all that really mattered was good contact and gap-free lines on the sides. So while the big glue up is going, I'm going to start working on the cubby that's going to go as a shelf above it. This is also a live edge that I've kind of squared the back end up on. Um, I clamp it here in this vise so I can start marking it up. This is perfectly flat and straight and this is perpendicular to it so I have a pretty good reference point. I want to use as much of it as I can so I can make it as high as I can, uh, but I'm not going to have this not be involved. I don't want it there. I don't want to see it. So I'm just going to kind of figure out where that knot is. You can actually see it higher on this side. There's the knot. So if we go there to there, now all this, I know I have to stop at that line when I'm doing my measuring. Now I think I want the cubby to be roughly six inches tall and we can shorten the legs later. Uh, maybe I should step back and point out I'm going to kind of create a waterfall effect. I want to take a 45 out of here and a 45 out of here so that I can fold the ends down and just have one continuous live edge go up, across, and down on this compartment. So I am going to start with about six and three quarters over here, and that's what I'm assuming my peak is going to be of this 45. So then I'm going to actually draw my 45 so I can see it and not screw it up later which is something I would be really likely to do if I just winged it. So now I can see that is my cut. That's what I need to do. Now the whole length of the top is 44 and 7 eighths. I was going for 45. Uh, material didn't work out that way. So just to see what I've got to work with, I'm going to put my mark on this line, 44 and 7 eighths right there. And now I'm going to draw my next 45. At this point, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just me working it out. Something like that. And now from these two lines, as long as I have whatever I said here, six and three quarter, we have plenty to work with. We have six and seven eighths. So I couldn't possibly go any taller without getting into this knot that I'm trying to avoid. Now I've already got this all set up. I've done a test cut on this to prove that I'm actually set at 45 and I'm happy with that. I had to swap the fence on my miter gauge here to the right side so that I have the extension arm way off onto this side because the first cut I'm going to make is over here um, and that would be much more difficult to do without the support of the rest of the table saw. So I'm going to end up switching this back to cut on the other side but that's okay. So from here, all I have to do is take the mark I made earlier and line it up with the beveled edge on my miter gauge. And in theory, I will get that cut exactly where I want it to be as I push it through here. So right there is on the line. Somebody's microphone batteries died before this shot, so you don't get any tool audio. But don't worry, I already fired my audio guy. You can see that I took this cut so slowly that I ended up with some burning on the end grain, even with a freshly sharpened blade. But the cut was perfect, so who cares? Because of the live edge, the opposing 45 degree cut got a little complicated. I toyed with the idea of attaching a temporary straight edge to the live edge side so that I could flip flop the board and get the job done. But in the end, I realized I was overlooking the easy solution. 
I put the miter gauge in the slot backwards and essentially pulled the board through the blade instead of pushing it. I decided the easiest way to align and attach the shelf to the desktop would be dowels, so I drilled some pilot holes in the bottoms of the legs. Then I put a dowel center in those holes and carefully lined my pieces up before pushing down firmly. This leaves a little indentation that marks the exact spot where I need to drill my opposing holes. I used a portable drill guide to ensure that these holes were perfectly straight. I cut another dado in the center of the top shelf for a center support. I left that material long, then put it in place and used the side legs to mark my exact height before cutting it to size. I cut a small rabbit around the inside edges of the shelf pieces to capture a back that'll come into play later. To glue the mitered corners together, I used the blue tape and super glue trick to attach some scraps that also have a 45 degree angle cut into them. Because of the angles at play here, the blue tape won't hold up to very serious clamping pressure, but it doesn't take much to close the gap and hold it while the glue dries. I used a biscuit joiner to embed some hidden splines for strength, then slathered on the glue and fit the pieces together. Carefully clamping from angle to angle on the scrap wood pulls the joint together and squeezes out just enough glue to let me know that the full surface is making contact. Once this dries, it's going to be very strong and should look like the grain wraps around with almost no interruption. And thanks to the blue tape, I can just pop off the scraps and have very little cleanup. To attach the center leg to the shelf, I put glue in the dado, then put the shelf in place using the dowel pins for alignment. Then I clamped the center, making sure to line it up with a reference mark I made earlier. This ensures that the leg dries squarely in the position where it's supposed to end up. Then, after that dried, I used a dowel center again to mark my hole locations and drill more pilot holes. While the desktop is still currently free from obstructions, I cut out a hole for a flush mount power strip in what will be the back left corner of the cubby. Before permanently attaching the shelf, I used a sanding mop in a drill to clean and sand the entire live edge. Then, I added some glue to the legs and the dowel holes and dropped the shelf in place. The cubby portion needs to be closed off in order to hide any messes that might live inside, so I went with sliding doors in tracks. I made the tracks using a strip of cherry by cutting the channels on the table saw. There needs to be two channels in each track, and it was easier to cut two tracks out of one board. I'd make a cut, flip the board, and make another cut. Then just bump the fence and repeat the process. Once I had the channels made, I cut the board down the middle and ended up with two tracks. To get the doors in and out of the tracks, the top track has to be deeper than the bottom, so I tossed them through my drum sander a few times to shorten them a bit. With the tracks cut to length, I added some glue favoring the back edge so any squeeze out would occur inside the cubby. Then I used some inverted squeeze clamps to press from the shelf down against the desktop. After that dried, I could clamp the top track in place. I built some nice drawer boxes off camera. I wanted these to be removable, more like bins than actual drawers. They have a little bit of relief so they can slide smoothly, but they're tall and deep enough so that they won't tip out by accident. To keep them from pushing past flush in the front, I glued some stop blocks in the back. The sliding cubby doors needed a finger hole to make them functional, but I didn't want to be able to see through the hole, so after drilling, I glued a very thin strip to the backside using CA glue. At this point, you've seen CA glue come up a lot. It's a staple in my shop, and if you're ready to add some to your workflow, follow the link in the description and use code GUNFLINT15 to get 15% off your order. I ended up spraying on a semi-gloss polyurethane for my finish. It's durable and easy to apply. Just throw on a coat, lightly sand after two hours, and throw on one more for good measure. Up until this point, I've left the back panel off to make it easier to spray finish inside the cubby and install the power strip afterwards. Now I can attach it using a little glue and some pin nails around the outside.
With the desktop upside down on a dog bed for padding and the flexi spot frame centered on top, I drilled some pilot holes through the rubber grommets, then attached the components together. I attached the controller under the right front corner, then plugged in all the wires and stashed them inside the cable management tray. With the help of my lovely assistant, we rolled the desk over and put the rest of the components in place. I plugged the base into the wall and gave it a test drive. Here you can see the smooth movement of the lifting mechanism, and I'll even quit talking for a second so you can hear just how quiet the powerful motors are. The Pro Plus Standing Desk Frame E7 was exactly what I needed to finish off this desk build. And when compared to the other frames on the market, it's clear that this is the best choice. If you want a frame for yourself, an entire desk, or any of FlexiSpot's other products, use my link below and get $30 off your first purchase. Well, that's about it, guys. Uh, like I said at the beginning, there are no plans for this because this is an experiment and winging it, but I still hope you found some value in my problem solving, my thinking it through process. Hopefully it was worth your time. Uh, I want to thank FlexiSpot for sponsoring this. If you need a nice adjustable base for a desk that you're building or you want a whole new base, go to the link in the description, go to their website, $30 off if you use my link. Good deal. Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you next time. Boop. Bye-bye.